All right, John, thanks for being here, man. Uh, good to be here with you tonight, man. Let me ask you a question. What does the E stand for? E? Yeah. Excitement, man. Excitement. It's uh, Johnny Wild. I love that. You know, when you first look at the name, you're like, John E. Wild. And then you go, hey, wait a second. Wait a second. Johnny Wild. Yeah. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. You guys got your album that just came out called 100 Proof. Uh, you guys describe yourselves as rebel rock. The album fucking rocks, man. Uh, your vocals are fantastic. Real strong voice on there. Thank you. Uh, your guitar players, man. These guys fucking smoke. What are their names? Me and Mike. You guys, It's just you guys playing the guitars? That's it. Michael P. Green, the gunslinger, does uh, the rhythm. I'll match the rhythm and do all the solos. I've been listening to the whole album for a few days and it just I don't even practice so thank you I appreciate that <laughs> I've been listening to the album for a few days and it just it kills man it's straight thank ahead you. kick ass rock and roll that's what I like about it um let me ask you where are your influences from as you were growing up as a kid what what turned you on to rock and roll what kind of bands were you into Well I tell you I you know obviously the Van Halen uh the Kiss Ted Nugent um, probably was the biggest influence on me just because of the fact that uh, it was more of a, a show and that old school kind of out of the 60s, 70s kind of style, that Motown, that groove, that funk. And then uh, obviously ACDC, you know, I liked it. It was just, it was appealing. It appealed to the masses, you know, and that's kind of what we're trying to do here. We're yeah. not trying to change the wheel, man. We're just going to put some new tread on that bad boy. Yeah. So now, this is your second album, correct? This is going to be our second full length, and we did have an EP that we put out, the two-thirds. That was just a couple originals and some covers and stuff like that, just to get our feet wet in the industry, you know? Right. Now, you have, correct me if I'm wrong, about eight tracks on this new album, 100 Proof? Yeah, we did eight tracks on this one. We felt it... Uh, we didn't really want to do more than that. I think we wanted to make sure that we had the best eight quality tracks that we felt it was good for, for the dynamic and how we're putting the band together and where we're going with it. So um, anything, we could have done another one, but I think on the next one we do come out, we're going to try to shoot 10 to 11, you know, make it a little bit bigger. You know, I have this talk with, with a lot of bands that come in, and honestly, I think the eight-song format is a great thing because the conversation I always have with people, you know, growing up as a kid, you had albums. There was only room for 40, 45 minutes right. on an album. Then the CD comes out, you got room for 70 minutes. And now you got, you know, you had bands, 14, 15 songs and a lot of filler, you know? So I'm all about just eight songs. That's all you need. You all know, right. 45, 50 minutes, bam, hit them hard and go home. Yeah, I think that's kind of what, what we were talking about. We didn't want to get too far out uh, you know, into the 40 minutes. You start losing people, and then the quality. Yeah. You might not have that one hit, and next thing you know, you've got, like you said, filler. And that's not what we're about. You know, We're about just keeping the, just pumping it, banging it out. You know, and, and To do that would be kind of maybe just a waste, and I don't think our fans would appreciate it. Yeah, and, and I love it that way. You know what I mean? Because they put right. it on, and it's just every song, fast, hard, kicks ass, goes at it. And, uh, you know, it just kills. It definitely kills. Thank now, you. the band, you guys are based in Rhode Island, correct? That's correct. And how long has the band been together? Well, the entity that we have now, we got Double D, Danny D'Alessio. We call him the porn star on bass. <laughs> we got the Admiral Andy K, probably the number one rock drummer out of Boston, Massachusetts. And my best friend, the gunslinger, Michael P. Green on uh, rhythm guitar. And then myself on lead and vocals and everything. Uh, that entity has been together for just about nine, uh, about say eight months before that we went through some changes, you know, trying to find the comp, uh, the, the right competitive yeah. attitude in the band and how everything kind of gelled together. This is the right thing. And it does take time and, uh, you know, not to take anything away from people who played on previous albums, but it was basically myself and Danny, you know, throughout all three so far. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the guys that are on stage with Blindside Thunder are the best guys that I know. They are my best friends. Uh, they bust my chops. They tell me when I suck. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's really good to know that, that, that when we're playing up there, we got no worries. You know, everybody knows their job. They know their part. Uh, it's called about the band, the brand, and the music. 
And that's exactly what we push when we're talking about Blindside Thunder and the Rebel Rock and Rebel Revolution. And he, let me ask you a question, because not that I hear it in the music, but mm. your look, the fact you call it Rebel Rock, was like bands like Leonard Skinner, any influence to you? Major. One more from, one more from the road. I had a I, feeling. I, I, I tell you what, that, Blackfoot, and Molly yeah. Hatchet. Yeah. You know, those, were, those were the ones that really kind of hit it for me. You know, uh, when you heard... That Freebird was the first song I ever learned. That was the the one guy when I was working at a pizza place showed me how to play it. And he said, look, you learn this song, you learn all rock and roll. This is what it is. And uh, you know what? I, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the style, the attack. Um, I grew up in the Midwest. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. And oh, okay. It, it was more country, you know? My dad was into old country, Hank Williams. And, yeah, mine and too. Elvis Presley, uh, Buddy Holly. You know, those are the things that I grew up on, even Fats Domino. So, I mean, uh, it was a real easy transition for me to go from that into, you know, the Nugent, which was some throwback style, but people really don't see it. They just see all the bombastic guitar stuff and, right, and everything. Right. They don't really, you had to get into it, you know, um, the Amboy Juke stuff that he did. Um, yep. So it was really, it was really easy for me to make that transition and to really get into the Van Halen's and everything that really kind of had that throwback sound a little bit. It really was great for me. And, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I grew up the same way with my dad playing, you know, the acts you just talked about. And in the long run, you learn from that. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, you've got to go back to see where it all started from. And I think that's where so many bands go wrong is they don't really study the history of rock and roll and see the evolution of it. You know, they just, they come on and they do their thing and it's like, you know what, you guys really should study, you know? I, I think it's important that you listen to every type of music out there. I agree. And I, I, you know, I listen to, you know, I, I won't admit it, but I guess I will for this interview. <laughs> you know, I've got, you know, I've got, uh, you know, uh, Bruno Mars on uh -huh. my thing. The kid, phenomenal he I really mean, is give it I, gotta, up to him. I gotta give it up i mean you know, it's not something i listen to but yes he's good you know you got i listen to flow rider i listen to old tone low but then i'll go back and i listen to you know my some of my hair metal things where there was some really 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 well-trained excellent musicians not every band right but there was some really good guys give me it. some names uh, who are well, you into i tell you what um if you look on my thing let's just i'll just go through it from the top obviously I talked about ACDC, but obviously the Van Halen. I'll listen to all Motley Crue, except for that uh, Theater of Pain album. I will, I'll push that to the side. You, you know? know what? It's funny. I just had that conversation with my producer. I said, that's kind of where they lost me on yeah. Theater of Pain. Um, you know, uh, let's see. I loved Dawkin. I loved Dawkin when they first came out, Breaking the Chains. Yeah. I thought that was a uh, that tooth and nail. I think it was tooth and nail. Um, geez, I mean, I could go through the, uh, let's see, I, I listened to Dream Theater. I listened to oh, all Steve band, Vai. Yeah. I listened to all Steve Vai stuff, even though I can only take him in doses. I listened to Ingve. Um, but then again, I go back and I'll listen to, um, a band called the Four Horsemen. Rockin' is my business. I've heard business of them. is good. Yeah. You know, these are deep, deep stuff. I'll listen to, um, Quiet Riot. Uh, one song that they played when they were on that first tour with ZZ Top for their encore clap uh uh was it clap your hands stomp your feet or something like that i think it was i'll tell you what when i heard that live i thought it was awesome obviously zz top though they're not the hair metal but what they did through the mtv and and using some of the things that uh just basic blues i'll listen to hen i got hendrix i got uh, chuck berry the whole chronological thing you know um anything that really i'll listen to firehouse and, and this is kind of funny I, i'll 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 really explain this People don't understand that when I was in the Marine Corps, I got a chance to see Firehouse before they were Firehouse. There was two bands that played the circle in Atlantic Beach down there by Camp Lejeune. There was one called Max Warrior and Icewater Mansion. And two guys from each band left to form Firehouse. So I kind of got to see them play in separate bands. And yes, they came out and they had the kiss of death when they got the... Uh, uh, the Grammy for the best new rock album, and then they kind of faded away. But yeah. tell you what, they really, they really had it together. I listened to some Steelheart. 
I was thinking, I'll listen to Poison. I have, really, I got nothing Poison against. Poison has some good tunes, absolutely. You know, I, I, you know, so I'm not really, uh, I'm not really, I don't really dial anybody off. I listen to Bon Jovi for some of the songwriting. Mm -hmm. As it's gotten older, he's gotten more mature, and I, I see some techniques that he kind of uses over. I listen to the Nickelback, Megadeth. I, I love my Megadeth. I'll, I'll listen to Testament. Uh, obviously, the Metallica. So. There is a plethora of stuff that I'm listening to every single day. I don't rule any band out. I give them their due. A Shine Down, one of my one of my favorites. I like now. them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They that the vocalist has got he's got uh, he's got power. That brother brings brings the wood. Um, there are just so many different bands out there. You have to find one of my favorite bands um, that really uh, is kind of on the down do, down low doing the red dirt metal thing. Texas Hippie Coalition. Um, I picked them up. I got a chance to meet Big Dad and Cord and John Exall from the band when they were here a couple of different times. Um, we're, we're pretty decent friends. Um, they've got their thing going on. So there's a lot of genres and a lot of things I think you have to be open-minded enough to listen to, um, though it may not be your palate. But listen to the songwriting. Listen to the structure. Listen to how it was put together or produced. You can come up with great ideas for new stuff. You know, everybody ripped yeah. somebody off. Yeah, true. And I couldn't agree more. And I say that all the time. I'm like, look, there's stuff I listen to. You'd be so surprised. And I'm like, and there's rock bands that I don't like, but I can yeah. still find good songs, you know, out of their catalog. It's like, well, I don't really like this band, but this is a good song and that's a good song and that's a good song. So, yeah, I mean, look at the transition that Kid Rock's doing. Yeah. And the guy came, he's come full circle with it, you know, uh, did the rap thing and then the rap rock then he went kind of rock and now he's sliding into the country and yeah. you know what hey if you can do it and you're a chameleon and you can pull it off i <laughs> uh, go for it you know knock yourself out man yeah 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 and he's also uh selling 20 dollar tickets for this tour which is unheard of uh you know the guy's making what is it uh you know for him to show was it 200 to 500 thousand a night yeah and to know that he's trying to keep everything affordable for everybody that says a lot about yeah. the, the man himself yeah, they can say whatever cool because he he's cashed i mean i don't mean to you know be negative but let's face facts he's cashed up and it's like you say so he's got everything he needs so you know what we don't have that kind of money the average concert goer yeah. so yeah. you know why not he takes a little bit less home so what you know yeah. he's doing it for the fans he's keeping it real i like that you know, you know I, I agree with that. I, I think if you can, you can do it. I mean, you may not like all of his music. You may not like any of his music, but you got to admit the guy is in a position now to do a, a paradigm and how tickets are sold and the price are sold and why they're sold, you know, and, and I think he's just given back because he's done so well. And the fans, I, I know the fans appreciate it. I know they do. They have to. Yeah. All right. Back to your band, Blindside Thunder. Who does the writing? Well, musically, it's kind of eclectic. It's kind of a little bit everybody. You know, Michael come up a riff, or I'll come up with something and do it. But basically, you know, we kind of hammer it out. Uh, everybody puts their part in, and I, I think that's that's how you have to have it mm. because I don't hear everything. Mike doesn't hear everything. So now I look for Danny and, and and Andy to put in what they need to put in. But as far as all the lyric, I do all the lyrical stuff except for uh, Daddy's Farm. We we had some stumbling blocks in the studio and. And Mike said, boy, that sucked. We got to fix that part. So, you know, we all chipped in and, and rewrote a couple of sections of Which it. Which is a very cool song, by the way. Oh, you like it? It was, a, it was you know what? It there's, was a departure. There's not a song on the album I don't like. Let me oh, put it that way. I'm trying to figure out what my favorites are. You know, I'm like, this whole thing rocks. So it, it's not like, yeah. You know, again, I've been listening to it since last week. And I'm not, I never go, ah, let me skip this track. It's, you know, too slow yeah. or whatever. I don't like it, you know. Not a bad track on there, man. Well, I, I appreciate it. I mean, you know, it, it's really scary trying to to hold true to the past a little bit, but trying to make everything sound modern and yeah. contemporary so it all blends, you know. And um, that's one of the things we were very conscious of when we did Daddy's Farm. I remember it was a smoke break for Mike. We were out in the parking lot. He says, you know, we need that one song. I mean, we're doing this rebel rock thing, you know, that having fun, smashing the dashboard, drinking, going seeing the girls in the halter tops and the Daisy Dukes in the summer. But we need to have that one song. And, and uh, I said, all right, let's, let's work on it. And 20 minutes later, we had the foundation for it, which really worked out for us. But in the big, big scope of things, 
we were very nervous about it because it was like, boy, we're, we're, we may be crossing some, some lines that people that when they hear rock and roll junkie or they're hearing a burn or even from the previous album, you know, we love to party and take me down. Now all of a sudden you're hearing this, this quasi kind of country rock with a little bit of zest to it. And uh, I think it really fits in, and I, I appreciate the commentary. It Thank does. You. It does, because, you know, I'm sitting there listening to the lyrics, and, you know, I'm kind of like, the first time I was kind of like, hmm. And then the more I listen to it, I'm like, no, this totally fits right in. This is, you know, killer, you know. Yeah. And, and I like the, the uh, content of the song, so. Yeah, that was loosely based on a trip when I was a senior <laughs> in high school with some friends of mine. We won't, a, we won't I, mention any names in that one. No, uh, yeah. I had a feeling it had something to do with something like that. So, yeah. Now, what is next for Blindside Thunder? Does the band plan to go get on the road and, and tour? What is the band doing now? Right now, we are in rehearsals for the big uh, Jimmy Van Zant tour that uh, it's uh, for his uh, debilitating uh, illness. And, uh, you know, it was, it's formatted with the uh, 38 special. Molly Hatchett and Leonard Skinner, and we picked up at least seven to eight show dates there. Nice. So we're going to be up and down the Mid Atlantic, all the way down to uh, Gainesville. Um, we got uh, Maggie Valley, which is over in Asheville, North Carolina, and before that, we're going to be in Charleston, South Carolina. So right now, as we speak, the show dates are rolling in now. I mean, this is what we've been waiting for for a couple months because we were in the studio all December, and then we did a quick, short mini tour in New York. Uh, you know, I was so sure. bummed out that I missed that because I hadn't, um, whoever contacted who, I don't know if we contacted you or you contacted us. Um, and then I started looking at your band. I said, motherfucker, these guys just played in New York. I would have went, you know, yeah. I saw no, the pictures look like a good time, man. Was oh, that your we, first trip to New York? That was our first time playing New York. And, uh, like I said, we did a couple different boroughs over there and ended up in uh, Manhattan and, and Times Square there at the best bar. And let me tell you. Wow, it was uh, it was cool. I mean, to say the least. I mean, we got the snowstorm that night, but hey, you know, it was worth the, it was worth the trip. The people are great, man. Yeah, that is just an awesome city. It's like you get there and you're standing right there in in man downtown Manhattan, and you're just going, man, this is awesome. I mean, if you've never been there and you don't know what it's like, it, it, you got to go one time just to experience it. But uh, loved it. Uh, we enjoy touring. That's that's where this band makes its money. I mean. Um, you know, we have everything on the website at blindsidethunder.com. Everything there you can upload, download, throw pictures, commentary. Everything's right there. All the social media links are yes, right there. The web, your website is very, very well put together. All, we, it's like you say, everything you need to know about the band, anything you want from the band is on the website. Yeah, any, any promoters, we got the uh, digital press kits there. We've got pictures, bio. We got new merchandise that'll be coming out. We got three shirts for the new tour. New hats that are coming out here in the next 40 days. They should be up there. Um, I saw the shirts. In fact, I saw some hotties wearing those shirts, in fact. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple, there's a couple <laughs> smoking babes in there. And, you know, I don't know where that come from because I ain't too pretty. But, uh, no, we've got some of the new shirts with the uh, new logo from 100 Proof. That's uh, going to be on the front of the shirt. Which is a cool cover. Then we're going to have the embroidered hat with that logo on it. What and kind of hat? That kind of hat? You're, you're like a cowboy hat? Or no, a... it's just a regular ball cap. But it's okay. a brush pull. Brush yeah, pool. which is real cool. I'm telling you, it. it uh, you know, we, we were talking about it, and I said, you know what? I think it's time to uh, level up. I mean, we leveled up production. We leveled up the songs. Now let's level up everything else. And, I mean, we've got a great fan base known as the Legion of Thunder, and we're over 150,000 worldwide. That's a combination of Reverb Nation, Facebook, um, bands and bands in town were almost at thirty thousand people following us. This is insane. That's great on bands in town. That's yeah. really good. I mean, this is insane. I mean, you know, the other day, uh, uh, Danny would call me up. He called me up in the middle of the night. He said, "Hey, John, check this out. We just sold six copies in Germany." I said, "Wow." That's the beauty of the internet. Yeah, and then you know we're selling copies in Switzerland. Yeah. All right. Well, do you okay. know those are two of our biggest markets outside of the U.S.? Believe it oh. or not. I'm telling you, they 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 just they buy everything and they they love it and they support us, um, you know. And I just want everybody to take the time, you know, to listen to something a little different. I mean, uh, we're straight ahead rock band. We don't make now any. You are. We're here to party. 
We're here about the beautiful girls. We're here about we're making music for that stripper housewife. That's what we do, brother. That's right. our whole job in life is to have fun. We treat each other like family and our fans like family. We don't like to call them fans. You know, it, it, we've, it's a family. And somebody said, you know, when are you guys going to have a CD release party? I, I said, why am I going to have a party? Every time we play out, it's a damn party. Right, right. Just invite some more people. That's right. all. You know, we're into drinking and hanging out and carrying on like anything else. Um, it's, you know, it's still a business. It's still a business, but we love everybody that gives everything to the band. And I don't care if you buy anything, if you see something and you're a member of the Legion of Thunder or you're on Facebook, Hey man, just share it. That's all you got to do. Share it. That's all we're looking for. I'm not looking for any money. You know, we're not looking for a handout. We're not looking for any special needs over here. But all I'm saying is if you like the music, download it. If you, if you like the music, you can't afford it. That's cool. Be a member of the Facebook, you know, uh, share some stuff, get it out there, you know, uh, help us out. And that's all I'm asking. I think if everybody does that, I think I think Internet radio right now can break Blindside Thunder this year. 2015 could be the year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, granted, Internet radio is in its infancy, but at the same time, I think it's the next trend. I really do. Not even trend. I think it's it's going to be the way to go. You know, oh, it's going to be in cars now. It's, you know, I, I really just think that it's, you know, that's going to be it. I tell you, there is a um, there is a big push um, in Internet radio and we do a lot of it. We do a, We do some we do a lot of terrestrial, too, but we do a way more Internet radio and some of the big stations like your own that really do a phenomenal job getting us out there. And that's how we build the fan base. I mean, we can't play every city every night. But you can get on, and we list all the radio stations, uh, terrestrial and internet, on our uh, our website in the back. If you want to find us, this is where we're playing in rotation all around the world. So there's no excuse not to find us. Obviously, we're on Spotify. Um, we're on iTunes. We're on iHeartRadio. Uh, we are on Google Play. We're, we're, I think we're on Xbox Live. I think <laughs> we are. I mean, we are everywhere. I mean, anywhere we can market the band is where we're at. And, you know, if people like it and they dig it and, and they think this is something that they want to do, they want to change their lifestyle, you know, this is what I'm talking about. If you're into popping beer tabs and uh, shooting some Coronas with me, man, it's all good in the hood. Just come on out and let's kick back and fire up a couple things and let's go chase some, chase some women. That's you know? rock and roll. That's what I like. That's what I like about the band. John, I want to thank you very much for doing this for us. Thank you, sir. And again, blindsidethunder.com. Go there, check it out. It's everything you need. Um, we are going to take you out of this interview with one of my favorite tracks. I love Rock and Roll Junkie. Can't get enough of it, man. All right. Love it. Cool video. Cool. You know, and that was obviously the first thing I heard. And I went, whoa. I said, okay, we're on to something here. Right. You know, and... You know, I like the way you got your website set up that you click on it and tunes start playing. So you, again, another very smart move. It's like, you're like, because I, I clicked on it. I was like, where's this fucking music coming from? You know what I mean? I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And finally I said, oh, I see. Okay, there's the little pause button. I watched uh, Rock and Roll Junkie. I said, this fucking kicks. And I have to say, and this is the song we're going to go out of here with, is Burn is uh, probably my second favorite track off the album good tune about life on the road man yeah and, uh, it really it. has alive it has balls that the, the thing whole has, album has balls man wow really does i appreciate your kind words and thank you for taking the time to promote us and have us on your station and to all the people that are you know watching this interview or listening to it you know what take the time to come to the blindsidethunder.com be a member of the revolution Help us out. Spread the word of Rebel Rock, man. Come on board. It don't cost nothing. It's all free. You can see us at all the social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. We're there. iTunes, download it, CD Baby. Crank it up with us, and God bless you, man. You and your friends and, and everybody out there in the internet, the radio community that does a great job for in independent bands and unsigned bands like us. God bless you, and thank you for so much that you do for us, man. Johnny Wild, everybody, and you are very welcome. And again, thank you as much. The way I look at it, it's a two-way street, you know? Everybody wins. So happy to have you on the show. Uh, you're invited to come back. I hope you guys get close to New York pretty soon because when I saw I missed you, I was like, damn, 
missed it by a week, you know, when I found out about it. So you come into the tri-state area, I'll drag my ass down there and be there. <laughs> we'll be there. I'll give you a call for sure, man. All First right, round's on me, brother. Sounds good to me. All right. All right. Johnny e. Wild, everybody from Blindside Thunder. Check them out. BlindsideThunder.com. You're listening to Rock Hard with Jay Conroy on rockhardradio1.com.